put your hands together for the late morning program with your host, Nam Ross. Hey. <laughs> Go on, Ronnie. Hey, well. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. It's my great pleasure. This is uh, December first. I, I finally hit the big time. Yeah, the big time, Dude. right? My, I haven't. My I've, agent. It was. You know how hard it was to get this gig. I know. Yeah, I'm sorry about your that. People, your my people. My people. It, your people. You know. We should have just contacted each other directly. What? Like, why are we going through agents and things? Uh, I mean, one of the problems with that, of course, is that you don't have people, and I don't have people. <laughs> so. But um, in all seriousness, thank you for coming. My Appreciate pleasure. it. My Appreciate pleasure. it. So cool to see you in the New York, New Jersey area and a lot more. And uh, it's just, you're my favorite, one of my favorite people, honestly. Really? Wait, what's that? I just got demoted. It was, I'm your, you're Funniest my favorite. People? And then you're like, one of my favorite. You, I've heard that you are, someone once told me that you are <laughs> sometimes funny. <laughs> Say that? No, Did someone say that? Okay, but um, yeah, thanks. I and uh, I haven't been on Facebook or uploading any podcasts lately. I just been mm. kind of busy in Kartik and things. But Kartik's over now, so I should be back. But uh, I don't know. I just feel kind of good off of it. Yeah. You ever have like a f- social media fast? I mean, you're not so much on social media. No, right? I uh, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I might be the oldest guest you've ever had. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, uh, you know, to be honest, f- when Facebook came along, it just was like, by the way, my kids think people who use Facebook are like ancient. Really? Oh, yeah. What? What do people? What my do kids are really like, I'm like, no kids, be careful of social media. <laughs> I don't want you using Facebook. And they're like, who uses Facebook? <laughs> What do kids use? <laughs> My kids think of Facebook the way I think of email. What? But I use email so much. <laughs> I love sending gifts and stuff to people. <laughs> like when they're like, Prabhuji, can you please come to this program? And then I send them like a, a funny gift, like, sure, or something like. <laughs> what about when you, have, when you have to say no? Then I send them a funny no one, like, leave me alone or something like that. No, I don't do that. But um, that would be funny. It would be funny, yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, the way I think of email, I don't even know what we were talking about. But the way I think of email, yeah. I used to be in film production, and yes. people really take email seriously because a lot of information is transmitted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And it got to be so much. Like it's so I can't keep up. Like between my devotee community, mm-hmm. my music stuff, mm. the, like work stuff, it was just like. This is how, like, I have to sit in front of the machine 24 hours a day or your phone. You've got to be, keep your notification on, like, ping, 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 it's ping. too much. Yeah. So I, I started thinking of email. Anyone who knows me knows. I started thinking of email as a river that flows near my home. Oh, <laughs> oh right. You, know, yeah. when you told need, me this once. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I need water, you go down to the river. <laughs> you bring your little jug. Enough, just enough simple, <laughs> enough for you and your family. It's just for sustenance, for some puja, a little bit of water. Yeah. And then when you need more, you, tomorrow you go back again. You know. It's so good. So, yeah, but, but my kids, yeah. So, Facebook. So, social media. I never got that into social media just because uh, I like Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. I, nice. I do some pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like the artsy side of it. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Facebook isn't my friend. Facebook isn't your friend. That's like a inception kind of thing. <laughs> um, so I know more, most people know you, but unless they're listening, I love Facebook. If Facebook is listening, please don't hurt me. Alexa's listening. Alexa, I love Facebook. <laughs> hey Siri, I love Facebook. Did you hear that? You just said something. She's listening to us. Um, so usually what I do with my guests, I kind of give a background of like mm-hmm. who they are, blah, blah, blah. Most people know who you are. 
<laughs> I haven't been in New York for a while. I've been traveling so much. I haven't been in New York for a while. And yesterday, two days ago, we went for a program with Radhana Swami at the Bhakti Center. Yeah. And the lady at the front desk was a volunteer. She didn't know me. And she, like, made me sign in. And she was like, <laughs> no, you have to give your contact. And, like, we're, I'm sorry we're registering. Everyone is coming. Yeah. And people who were with me were, like, laughing at me because they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gorvani. <laughs> <laughs> So, they do their job very well. I, so I, kudos to them. I'm becoming unknown. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. But um, so you travel now. I mean, let's go, let's move it back a little then. So you you went to Gurukul. Yeah. Right? For yeah. how long? I went to Gurukul starting from the age of four wow. till about the age of ten. So not so long as far as some people like some friends went all the way through high school. Yeah. You know, but um, uh. Uh, those are pretty formative years from four till 10. Yeah. Think about, you know, totally. I was mostly away from my parents during that time. Right. Right. This mm-hmm. is where we flash up like a, one of those single tear crying emojis, <laughs> <laughs> but not the laughing sideways emoji. Cause that would be inappropriate. That would be really inappropriate. Yeah. And if anyone's doing that right now, shame on you. Shame on you for doing the sideways emoji. Sideways. That's laughing like when it's really emoji. something really funny. Yeah. Then you put that one. Or devotees who are less savvy also do that for a lot, like when it's really sad. Like I've seen pictures like so and so Prabhu is passing away, <laughs> and it's like sideways <laughs> crying emoji. And I'm like, are they ecstatic that he's going back to Godhead? Is that what they're talking? They about? They should put the laughing one and the crying one because because first of all, we're we're sad of losing their association, but true. we're happy because they are going back to the spiritual world. That is true. But um, this yeah, is emoji higher, etiquette. The higher emoji etiquette. Vaishnav etiquette expressed through emoji etiquette. Emojis. Everything can be expressed through emojis these days. Anyway, <laughs> you so you went to Gurukul and then um, and then you came back here and then you went to public school. My my new favorite emoji thing is <laughs> is the japa the the beads. Yeah, the yeah, beads the beads. Yeah, emoji, and then. The slash or the greater than sign and a skeleton. Like Joppa or die or Joppa is greater than the death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or chant and be happy with it like the Joppa and the One time me and a friend um from the Bhakti Center we would set we would make the a whole like uh, Krishna pastime in emojis. I would love to see those. That would be I great. should get those texts back. Like like you know there's a boar there's a, so we did Varaha. You should do them and send them out. You should send them out a series of stories. Like. And, no, and then I would send it just along like seven lines of emojis, and I'd be like, "What What's story, story is this?" <laughs> and then he'd be like, "Oh, that's like Hiranyaksha fighting Varaha, and then him dying, and then Hiranyakashipu is angry, and then it, you can easily express it all. It's really it's awesome, cool. actually. And then there's a turtle one for Kurma, and then there's like. There's, There's all kinds no of cool ones. Boy, though, I've looked for any sort of blue. Mm, yeah. Like I went into the guys because like you can be brown. Yeah. Or black. Yes. Or white. Yeah. Or peach. I usually make Krishna black, like the the oh, most yeah. darkest. I did one. a black boy and a white boy, like not white, but like white, like Balaram and Krishna. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I wanted a blue boy. Yeah. Yeah. Guru Maharaj always says purple, green. Like he's like black. Yellow, purple, like when he's naming kinds of people who can come together in the Sankirtan <laughs> movement. Sometimes purple? he says like green, purple. Have you ever heard him say that? Before? No, I have. Oh yeah, uh, I think I might have heard it. Yeah, or maybe I just made that up. No, no, no. I, I've heard yellow, but purple. I haven't heard purple or green. All kinds of people. I guess sometimes black. You can be so black that you're purple. I played football with a guy like that in really? high school. Yeah. That's a good segue. You went to high school, public school. You, uh, you caught me on a linear, on a linear. Uh, yeah. So I, after Gurukula, my parents put me in a, a, um, like a uh, private school for creative kids in Denver. Whoa, Denver. Yeah. So my mom married my stepdad when I was around that age, nine, nine. Right. And then, uh, so I started going to a private school, not a, not a devotee school, but like a creative school. Nice. And um, and then uh, um, after that, around 13, I moved out to Los Angeles to live with my birth father and right. went to high school out in L.A. In L.A.? So I played football. It was an inner-city L.A. school. Like, what? 
mostly black school in Los Angeles. Yeah. It was, it was a rough school. And you were, in, you were there? Yes. How was that experience? Um, it was um, very formative. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, you know, <clears throat> our dear friend Ananta went to a school that was mostly Jewish white kids. Oh. So he had, we all, we have shared this experience of being in this kind of like, first of all, we're devotees, so we don't fit with any of like the people. Yes. Yes. But then we're like totally fish out of water in another way too. Yeah. So yeah, it was interesting. The Rodney King riots happened when I was in Whoa, high school in LA. Whoa, something, right? 90, I did a project on that. Yeah. 92, school. something like that. Yeah. I can't remember, but, um, yeah, that happened. That was right. That was with the kids from my school. That was in in, in that area. You could see the smoke from the my friend's apartment. Well, yeah, there was a lot of riots after that. Yeah, it was a big deal. L.A. And then you and then you um, you got into acting and stuff, right? Yeah, in high school, I got cast in a um, in a Hollywood movie, and then I started a little mini career in Hollywood. I did uh, three movies in a TV show. Dangerous Minds being one of them. Yes, love uh, the hair in that one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> What other ones? Uh, I was in the re- first remake of The Brady Bunch. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I played That's a, a guy named first... Leon, Leon in a band called Flem. Flem, right. Yeah. It's high art. <laughs> and then uh, I was in the worst movie of the careers of two of, Ameri- of two of the world's great actors, Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Shot a movie called Virtuosity. Oh, uh, right. And it was, it's such a terrible movie. I highly recommend all of your watch, l- listeners, watchers, check it out. It's terrible. It's so terrible that yeah, you should watch it. Yeah, yeah. It's entertaining how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see me get killed by Russell Crowe. Really? For, for those critics of Mike Kirtan who've always wanted to watch me be killed, there's a movie. <laughs> Oh where <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> where you can actually watch. You could even put it on loop if you wanted. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. That's a good. You you are great at segways. You're great at segways. To, let's I talk like, about. Have you ever time. ridden a segway? I have. I've never. They're difficult, man. You'll, they? I fell. Yeah, it's really difficult. It's almost like a segway is like a metaphor for bhakti. Razor's edge. Mm, I like that. Like if you don't if you don't do it properly, you'll just fall down. Yeah. Like literally, you'll fall down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So um, about kirtan, let's let's talk about kirtan. You're you're kirtania. I am an aspiring kirtania. Yeah. At the Bhakti Center on Thursday night, I did kirtan before Radhana Swami mm-hmm. and Ananta. Yeah. Boy, I did not feel like a kirtania that night. That kirtan was beautiful. They, the both of those devotees. No, no, yours was. That's the mood that you have to have. Dry as a desert. No, 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 and no. And when when Radhanath Maharaj started singing, before his first note, Maharaj was already crying for Krishna. I was like, wow, that's the way to do it. Right. Oh, yeah. Man, I was like. Phew. My favorite. Yeah. Blew the whole kirtan. My whole my whole kirtan. It's just like a warm up. But do you ever feel like you did a good kirtan? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. But but uh, like uh, there was a. This last year we were in uh, Radhadesh for the Kuli Mela. You went for that? Oh yeah, you went yeah. for that. Yeah, my yeah. family, Vrinda, and the kids, and and we were on stage with Hari Kirtan and Juggy from the UK. Yes. And yeah. This devotee playing bass um, from Radhadesh. Uh, I've just met him, so I'm, I can't remember his name. Sweet old older devotee, mm-hmm. and uh, just everybody was so nice. And I just looked around and I thought, the, "Just Krishna, take me right now in the middle of this kirtan. I'm ready to go." Wow, really? Well, what else are you waiting for? Uh, I've never s- s- said that before. Really. I mean, like, I need to go to the bathroom. Take me away from here right now. <laughs> or I'm tired. Take me away from Calgon, here. Calgon, <laughs> take me away. <laughs> you remember that? You, are you old enough to know that commercial? No. Calgon, take me away. No, I never had seen that. It was like a bubble bath commercial or something. Like some lady had a hard day cleaning her house, like in the 90s. <laughs> and she would pray to her bath soaps. Calgon? Calgon, take me away. <laughs> And she would be rescued from the boredom of her life. By mm. 
<laughs> my Vishnu in the bubbles, the form of the bubbles of the Kalgan soaps. What do you what do you think about when you when you do kirtan? Um, prashadam. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret. And what I think about when I eat prashadam is kirtan. <laughs> oh yeah. No. Uh, what do I think about? I, it's a, right, that's a really nice question. That's an important question, actually. Um, I like to think of... Okay, what do I like to think of and what do I actually think of? Yes, yes. Okay, what do I like to think of? I like to think of dressing the holy, the Lord, the body of the holy name with the melodies and the, and the rhythms. Yes. I like to think of doing Shringar with, uh, with music to the person of Srinan Prabhu. Oh, wow. So I'll sometimes I'll be looking at these and sometimes I'll start at their feet and I'll I'll wrap I'll wrap the melody around Radharani's or you know Krishna's feet or the bottom and then I'll have it come up around their head and like that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking how am I dressing the Lord's body with the holy name Wow um, that's what I like to think of when possible and a little side note I learned this great trick for getting awesome darshan years ago. Resist looking at the Lord's face for as long as possible. Really? Just try and look, look at, the for, at the feet, feet for as long as possible. Wow, that's really cool. You get you get more blessing that way. You know what I do? Mm. I I uh, I look at the deities for a little while and then I and then I look away for a while and then I ask myself, what color are the deities wearing? <laughs> nice. And then if I can't remember, I'm like, what darshan did you take? You didn't even you didn't even think of like what the deities are wearing. And I also do that like if a friend is standing next to me and they're like you cover their eyes. No, no, no. I'm actually, if they're sitting if a little bit farther away, I'm like what color are the deities wearing? Don't look. And they're like. <laughs> Sometimes we overlook it. Anyway, that's a it's a dumb thing. I like that. No, I like that. I like that. I heard once Srila Prabhupada said, you know, Prabhupada loved common sense. Right. It's one of the things that makes Prabhupada such a special acharya in our line. Mm. Prabhupada loved common sense. Yeah. And I heard once that Srila Prabhupada said, an intelligent man, if he's laying down, he's counting the beams in the ceiling. Whoa. Like detail oriented. And always, always, why not? Pay attention. Fully. Pay attention, yeah. Not be present. Be present. I think being present is, is, is hard in this day and age right now. I, with all the distractions we have with our phones and with be, thinking of other things and being other, thinking of other places and what other people are doing, it's just like so distracted. I mean, even in spirit, that affects spiritual life as well. Like, if you can't be focused, like, the way people, like, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and all these others, like, they were, how many, how much they were accomplishing within a, a day. Like, how, we, I can't even imagine what it is to accomplish that much stuff. It's just because, like, I'm so all over the place. Mm. It's just, like, it's kind of discouraging. You know, that, that, uh, that's one of the things that I've been really appreciating about Japa is I've been really trying to take seriously my Japa practice. Yeah. You know, as I'm, I'm, you know, aspiring for initiation, trying to trying to work towards being initiated. Right. By Radhana Swami. So one of the things I'm understanding is that Japa is actually a superpower. Mm. In fact, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. I'm do what? Gonna, I'm gonna do this. And if if you find out later we can't do this, you can cut this out. No, I don't cut anything out. But oh. if you take out your phone, I'm gonna take out my phone. Boy, too. I want to play this thing for you. You know how you're old? You know how you know if you're old? <laughs> okay, hold on one second. I'm like talking about... Uh, I want to play this thing here. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Let's see. What is this? So is my superpower. So is my superpower. Super so is my superpower. Hey, that. Oh, hey, okay, that's hey, enough. That's, that's enough of that. Is that Bali's? It's Bali's new track. That he hasn't even recorded yet. He probably doesn't watch this, so he will never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been realizing that actually, Japa is a superpower. I mean, In what way? Okay, so what is a superpower? A superpower is something that gives you an 
uncommon abilities, abilities that are not available to the normal person and lets you achieve incredible things. Right. So what I realized <laughs> is that Joppa done properly, not that we have a chance because we're all so busy and challenged and over there. Yeah. But Joppa done properly allows you to use one of the many superpowers that comes from Joppa is it allows you to use your moment to its fullest potential because you don't have that much time in the day, bro. You've done all kind. You've been chanting your Joppa for two hours and you got other stuff to do and you just go ahead and you look at this and say, this doesn't need to be done. Sometimes I have a situation where like I'm chanting and people are texting me about something and I just like, you know what, Krishna, I'm not going to deal with that right now. Yeah, exactly. And an hour later, they write back. They figured everything out. Yes, <laughs> Joppa's a superpower. Yes, yes, yes. Like, it just come, it, it's Krishna doing it. You know, Ritadva Jamaraj told me this funny thing. He said, um, "Mental speculation is discouraged in our sampradaya." Do your listeners know what a sampradaya is? Uh, probably not. You should explain. Okay. Um, the lineage. Our lineage, our lineage of teachers, right? Uh, the tradition. Tradition, yes. Right? So, um, so mental speculation, like, oh, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe we're all Krishna. Maybe there's two Krishnas. Maybe, like, just whatever, making it like that's not. But he said philosophical speculation based on reading or study is encouraged. Right. You know that? Yeah. Okay, well, he told me when he heard that I was trying to focus on my job, but he told me this very nice thing. He said, Krishna says, Kalosmi loka kshaya krit pravrido. Look, you know that verse, mm. time I am. Right. So he says that he, his philosophical speculation mm. is that if we give Krishna the time, dedicated time for our japa, that he easily manifests in our life through the time factor to empower our, the other time of our lives. Right. And, other stuff. and I've experienced that. There's that verse... Um that if you focus on Krishna consciousness, then all your other duties will be taken care of. It's funny, yeah. It's, that's a really funny thing. You know, uh, Bhakti is. You know, have you ever seen that movie, The Razor's Edge? No. With Bill Murray? No, I haven't. Gotta watch that movie. Everyone. We all, don't go to Cinema House. All five of you, but you can rent from block, <laughs> Blockbuster. <laughs> all five of you. <laughs> In fact, all five of you guys text Nam and we'll get together after the taping of this and we'll just watch we'll it. We'll make a WhatsApp group. <laughs> we'll watch it on WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, Razor's Edge. What is it? It's a movie. It's a great movie about the spiritual guy in the 1920s who like goes to the Himalayas and comes back to his life and has to like... Anyway, it's a cool movie. But anyway, Bhakti is a Razor's Edge. Yes. And I, what the original made me think of that is growing up as a devotee, growing up as a Krishna kid, you hear these quotes of things like that. And you see people around you who you think are fanatical and they're like not taking care of their responsibilities and not taking care of their family or they're not taking care of their wife or their children or whatever. And they're like, I'm just doing my devotional life. I don't have to take care of any of these things. Yeah. So it's like that type of quote was like, oh my God, that's terrible. But when you put that quote on top of someone sincerely struggling to take care of their family and take care of their responsibilities and be a kind person, all those things. And then on top of that, you say, and yet if you do it, your spiritual life, it takes care of all these things yeah it what it does is not diminish the value of all the responsibilities it increases the value of the bhakti it's showing how powerful the bhakti is mm. does that make sense yeah it does but yeah i mean a lot of devotees externally maybe in the long run we can see that krishna had his own plan but in the old days a lot of devotees suffered from mismanagement of finances of energy mm -hmm. so you know it's a question like i would ask you how could you say that just doing bhakti just doing spiritual things takes care of all your material um well it's kind of the say it's kind of along what you were saying that you know if you you know krishna makes that time for you or he he 
allows things to happen like things work themselves out mm. i'm i'm not for i'm not for like you know i'm just gonna sit here and chant japa and the bills would be paid Podcast for all day long yeah yeah or the you know the tulsi's gonna water herself and the bills are gonna be paid and at least not that tulsi yeah not that definitely not like that, the, one. that tulsi the other one. she better water herself she better you know, you're gonna water her <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what that means um but yeah I think that we have to make some attempt until we're... That's such a nice point. I say this all the time. Remember that beautiful story from uh, The Journey Home Radha Swami shares about the panther loose on Mangar? He's with Ramesh Baba and there's a panther. He has a stick. A little, little stick. stick. Oh, what is that going to do? He says, no, this isn't, for, this isn't for the panther. This is to show Krishna that I'm not lazy. <laughs> That's such a good story. I love that. Great story. I love it's that story. one of my favorite stories. So long story short, for the viewers who don't know that story, I mean, you kind of said it, but yeah, he's with this sadhu, saintly yeah. person, living in this rural mountain in Vrindavan, in Varshana, living on this mountain, and the villagers are all freaking out because there's a panther loose, and in it's the night time, and they just sleep out in the open on these little cots. Yeah, and so he's going to bed, and he's like, I heard there's a panther loose, and everyone's like freaking out. So then the the, the he's had he's the the saintly guy is sleeping with this little stick, like a tiny stick. Yeah. And what's it for? Is that for the panther? <laughs> no. What is what use is this tiny stick against the panther? <laughs> this is to show God that I'm not, I'm not lazy. I'm going to do my part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's I mean, could have he? He could have found a bigger stick. <laughs> a little late. He was maybe a little lazy. He just looked for a short stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. No. Yeah. I mean. Uh, you know, I heard a nice quote from Srila Prabhupada that Srila Prabhupada said a Vaishnava is like a duck. Quack. On the top, on the top of the surface of the water, the ducks look like they're just chilling. Yeah. But underneath, they're underneath. peddling like crazy. All oh, right. Yeah, that's so good. I love that. Did you actually say that? Well, I heard. <laughs> I heard guy. that a guy said that that I, he his cousin was at the temple. No, no, no. His cousin was one of the ladies married to a guy who used to be a a, a crew member of the Cindy Steamship Company. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, and he overheard Prabhu talking to himself through the door of his compartment on the Jaladuta as they were approaching Boston Harbor. Yeah, right at. His, <laughs> Yeah. Um, Actually, Prabhupada was composing out loud the Jaladuta song. Right. Yeah. And he happened to be Bengali, so he could understand. Right. Um, do you ever face, like, because I know you used to work, like, a regular job. Like, uh, <laughs> like you used to be a, a you used to put... Isn't this guy one of the funnest guys there is? Oh, in come the world? on. Oh, stop it. We haven't even gotten the good stuff yet. So, like, you know, you used I to. I want to ask him questions. Come on. What no. questions do we want to know about Ram? I'm Nam. This guy, I love him so much. Ram. <laughs> Ram Nas. Ram Nas. Ram Nas. Ram Nas. <laughs> okay. No, no, listen. I'm doing the questioning here. How long did it take you to style your hair this morning? Is it, didn't it a take... short thing? What? Is it a short time or a long time? What's a short time? Your the hairstyle. Short time. I just comb it. <laughs> and and the facial hair. Is this for Chaturmasya? No, 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 no. It's just I'm lazy. Because <laughs> uh, this one, it's like the afternoon with the five o'clock shot. No, no, no. That's not five o'clock. That's like three weeks. Oh really? It grows so slow. This is like one, two months. Oh nice. Okay, listen. Do you, um, like, you know, you, you used to work as a movie producer, right. like, for the government. Director, producer. I've, done, I've worked on both sides of the camera. Yeah. I've written, I've written, helped write devotional stuff. I've written professional stuff, History Channel, Discovery Channel. I've directed, um, you know, uh, for documentary. I've directed that for... That sounds super interesting. For, for Hollywood films. I worked with a devotee named Mukunda, who's a very talented writer. Oh, yes, yes, yes And he... Um, he directed and wrote a movie with Paul Walker, and uh, I did the late Paul Walker, the late Paul Walker, who got a Bhagavad Gita and came to Kirtan and Prashad before no. he passed away. No, where yeah. in South Africa, Mukunda hosted him. We gave him a Bhagavad Gita. He he ate Prashadam, and we did Kirtan together, and he really liked it. How much later did he die? Short time. What? Yeah, that's so cool. Not that he died, but that that you you know got, you know we. 
<laughs> that you um, had a kirtan program with yeah. him and stuff. Yeah, for sure. He was a pious guy. He, um, it's interesting, yeah. Uh, so what I was saying was about your, you know, you have dedicated your life to kirtan. Yeah. Like fully. I don't know, that's not totally true. You know, I'm a musician. You're I'm a musician. an artist. Right. I'm trying to dedicate my life to Krishna. Right. And I have musical talent sometimes. And I want to use it in Krishna service. Just like I want to use also any other talents that I have in Krishna service. Mm. Like, for example, my good looks. <laughs> <laughs> and my fast growing facial hair. How long is that? I shaved like just before I got in the car to come here. Dang. Lord, I, may, I may run out during the interview and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't see, you know, I, there was a there was a time where I was really criticized on social media, Facebook is not my friend, uh, about some of my kirtan stuff. And the funny thing is people didn't understand because no one ever talked to me, of course. <laughs> they only of talked course, to each no, other. No, no. The, the thing no one understand is I don't really consider myself a kirtania. I consider myself an aspiring kirtania. Mm. But I am a musician. That's how I see myself. And that... You know, just like if we heard one day that Beyonce started liking Kirtan, yeah. like everyone would be like, come to the temple, Beyonce. We don't care what you do be outside of the temple. You can eat people or whatever. <laughs> as long as you're famous, come to the temple. We yeah. love you. Yeah, yeah. Because she's an artist who's trying to do suddenly feeling attracted to Krishna. Yeah. So that's how I consider myself. You know, that I am also a famous and beautiful black woman. No, not that way. Sorry. That that I'm <laughs> that I'm a musician. Right. <laughs> and then I'm just trying to use talents in Krishna's service. And so mm. I make no claim that I chant Shuddhanam. I don't chant Shuddhanam, the pure name, like that the holy name is descending. But I want to. Right. You know? I want to associate with wonderful people like you. One of my favorite singers in the world. His oh, stop it. Das. oh stop it. I mean it. I love your voice. Can we sing a little together on this show? Sure. We should sing something. Later. We'll sing later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that time when you were getting criticized. I remember that. I think, I think you know, to be honest, I think I was on that bandwagon, too. Really. I'll be, let's just be honest. I was. Did, did my, does my agent know this? <laughs> the, your agent, this is off. This is a... Uh, I, 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 they signed everything. They signed everything for this interview. This is a real talk. Hashtag real talk. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being honest about that. Uh, I, I, I was, but it's just, it's just because I was immature. You know, I have, I have, um, I learned a lot from that period. Tell us, tell us know, about it. Well, I don't know how much detail people know or how much I can get into without just making just, it boring. No, no, not boring, but just like, okay, basically, you were criticized for. Who's that? Um, my agent, bro. Sorry, this interview is over. No, it's not over. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> now this interview is over. No, no, no. Oh, oh my lord. This is a highly professional affair, and I gotta tell you, I am just wowed by the production value. I mean, the tea is fantastic. The conversation is pretty good, and the camera work, I mean, out of this world. And uh, the speed at which the doors are answered here is second to none. I mean, at my house, you know, we don't answer the door. I don't even think we have a doorbell. We actually don't have a doorbell. So, you know, production, serious, serious business here. Serious business here. Um, oh, sorry, that was my neighbor. Great examples. Great Vaishnava examples of television uh, production. What are you talking about? Me and uh, the, the viewers. Crew. Me and the crew. We know. So, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about... Um, oh, no, no, no. Other way. way. Okay, this way. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, go in now. This has never happened before. I like that. What were we talking about? We were talking about um, Kirtan. I think we should adjust it a little more. Here, let me lean back. Is this okay? No, it's not okay. Oh, Krishna. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I think about all the time? Basically, Krishna thinks that I think he's like a cameraman and like a fix-it guy and like a parking attendant. Because I always call Krishna's name when I need stuff done. I'm like, oh, Krishna. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I do, I do Hanuman for parking. Oh, that's because Hanuman he helps you find things. <laughs> Hanuman helps you find things. Krishna Park. We we've had this conversation before. Really? The Battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna drove a chariot. Have you ever tried to parallel park a chariot? <laughs> Krishna is Park Ishwar. He doesn't. Par- he doesn't park the chariot. What you think? Krishna's just so proud. He's like throws the keys. He's like, <laughs> you park that. <laughs> he made Arjuna park it. He can't. Krishna can't get off the chariot first. It's gonna burst into flames. You read your Mahabharat. Arjuna has to get off first. He tells Arjuna to go save him a plate at the Prashadam line, <laughs> and he parallel parks the chariot. Krishna's at. He circled. You know how many times he had to circle the block looking for a pot. <laughs> You know, him and Arjuna at the far side of the battlefield, and they're like, you know, fighting Jayadrat, and the sun's Indra, going down. And did like, Indra give him that chariot? And all the like, all the like, did Indra give him the chariot? Someone get ga- someone gave him the chariot. Like I would think that if a demigod was like had like um, a request for another demigod, to, like Vishra, who, who's a, um, Vishra Karma, to make a chariot, he's like. Okay, listen, it's got to be really nice, gold and everything, but you have to, like, if I press a button, it's got to turn this big, and I can put it in my pocket. For sure. Right? So, I don't think you need to park it. I'm sure there was some kind of, like, thing regarding... It was like it turned into a matchbox car. Yeah, I always dream of that when I'm, like, Christian half an hour. Christian on his turban. They were like... <laughs> There's a little <laughs> chair. <laughs> They're like, what is that? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so uh, so there was a period of time. Well, uh, you know, I don't want to name names. You don't have to. But basically, what happened was there was a period of time where certain devotees had decided that they didn't like the way I was running my program. Yes. And they went to a senior devotee and they started complaining about me. Yeah. And then you know, kind of like gathered his responses. Yes. And kind of posted it to the world. I remember. Yeah. You know, and. Um, Um, for me, it was actually one of the hardest times of my life. Really? Yeah. Because, you know, I grew up in the movement, and I grew up thinking that people who maybe came from various backgrounds who didn't have a unified mission, that it's okay for them to have misunderstandings with each other. Right. But for those of us who grew up in Prabhupada's movement, we should be better. We should see. We should encourage each other. Mm. And I, one of the things I used to say to people at the time when I was getting really discouraged, is, I mean really criticized, like I do lots of things wrong. Like criticize me for something I'm actually doing. <laughs> right, right. Not this, which I'm trying to do the best I can. Yes, yes. Like criticize me for eating everything bagels from time to time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this morning before the podcast with Namras. Right. You know. That, that's a good point. You know, so 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 it really discouraged me, but I'll tell you something that happened to me that I still can't I still can't figure out how to understand fully. Radhanath Maharaj gave a class in Vrindavan where someone actually asked if the kinds of things that me and Vishwambar and other people were doing were I was there. You were there. Mm-hmm. Vrindavan. Do you do you know if there's a recording of that lecture? There there is. Can you help I me? I know find the it? I know the date too. Can you help me find it? Uh, I'll help you find it, yeah. Do you remember what he said? Someone asked a question specifically about... I took second initiation that day. So I was in a, like a, I was like a different, um, in a different space. Okay, well, we got to double check the lecture, but what I heard secondhand from people. Yeah. And you want to say what you heard or what you remember? Um, no, but I could verify what you're saying. Okay, so please verify, because uh, what I remember hearing yeah. is that Maharaj named me you know, or that it was named in the question. Somehow or other it was named. Mm, yeah, I think I kind of remember that. And then Maharaj said that actually what we were doing was just as glorious as what other senior devotees who are trying to hold the name down, you know, as a steady service, just as glorious as what they're doing. Right. Because we're doing what we can. Right. Because we're using what ashram we're in and the situation we're in and being in the West. We're doing all these things and still trying to support our families and keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same. Yes. 
And when I heard that Marge had defended my honor, this ties in with, you know, yeah. an, uh, other conversations we've had, that Maharaj was putting himself on the line in a public way to defend my honor and encourage me, knowing that it would be so encouraging to me. Yeah. It it began healing my heart. It was the first kind of big shift I made. And I wow. thought if Maharaj is willing to encourage me, then I, I'll just keep But going. you heard this from someone who, who told was you there? this. Yeah, you need to listen to what he said. Yeah, I'd like to hear I, it. I'd have I to, I'll, find it, I'll find it for you. I'm very grateful. February 7th, February 20th, 2011, I believe mm-hmm. it was the day. Anyways, I'll find it for you. Great, thank you. But yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a weird time. I think everyone was a bit immature. Yeah. And I, the- I, I, you know, I'll speak for myself. I was definitely immature. Mm-hmm. I, you know, when you come, when you come from something like, when you think yourself as like, Basically, when you're not humble and you're like full of pride, you think you're doing the best thing, and then you're, and if you're really kind of neophyte and you think that, then you just want to drag everyone else down and like take everyone else down. And we're, we're, I'm doing the best thing, and everyone else is doing everything wrong, you know. And now, just like I feel like now, you know, being a father, you know, being married, all these things, like experiences that I've had, I just feel like so humbled. Like yeah. extremely humbled. Yeah. Not that I think I'm I'm humble or anything, but I just feel like there's a real deep, like a real a real humility that's developing from that. I mean, I think I think there should be like you know, different movements, different groups have different practices to help people progress. Yeah. I think our movement should make it mandatory that everyone, no matter what ashram they're in, changes a poopy diaper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. That is fully humbling. Very humbling. And it doesn't have to be on a kid. You could change anyone's poopy diaper. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be horrible. <laughs> if you really want, basically, depending on how humble you want to get, you find a victim or like someone who a perpetrator of poop, and basically oh change. Oh my god! Like if you have a family member who has a dog, just put a diaper on them. Oh and my then- god, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted a monkey as a pet. Why? <laughs> no. Why? Just because, like, I mean, like, how cool would this be? Like, they climb on you. You're like that guy, and it has a little. The little monkey has a little hat. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, play my harmonium. The monkey dances. That would be no. Okay, that would be cool. Like those those manjira things. Like, and you're doing kirtan, and it comes out and. That would be. But really then the problem is the monkey's got to wear a diaper, and then someone's got to change the diaper. This that, is the that's not so cool. Not cool at all. But humbling. Definitely humbling. Yeah, you know, um, my favorite song is Narada Muni Bajavina. Beautiful song. One of my three, like three, <clears throat> four top favorite songs. What melody though? Traditionally, go for the truth. Narada Muni Bajaya Vina Radhika Ramana Name Nama Amani Uditai Bhakata Gita Same. That when the devotees gather together and chant the names of Radhika Raman to send and appear amidst the, the Sangha of devotees. Love that. I love that kirtan. Oh, it's such a nice description. In fact, I have it here in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know that paint. Remember, you were telling me that painting, the painting of Parikshit Maharaj talking to Sukadev Goswami, or no, actually Sukadev Goswami gave. And then there's the whole crowd. To say. Okay, wait, we'll, we'll totally, <laughs> okay. So what we were saying was, we want to heckle. You know, like you know how heckling can be so important. Like you know, roasting, seen, roasting. Have you seen that? Like, like uh, what was it called? Like the space like the sci-fi guys who heckle all the old sci-fi movies have you ever seen them no i haven't there's like a comedy show they used to have on comedy central where they would sit there and they would did we lose our one viewer no no we're (laughs) (laughs) and and they heckle the show yeah yeah like why is this guy have a can of paint on his head or like whatever right so we were talking about heckling iskon paintings yeah because there's such great, there's, I mean, we grew good up with material. Them, good material. Good so material. So there's one, like, is it Sukadev Goswami? Uh, 
Yeah. Who's sitting on the dais? Yes. Brick ship, Prabhu painting. Yeah. And all the, I think it's pretty sure all the sages are there and everyone's looking so saintly and there's a one guy with a super funny flat haircut. Yeah. It's like some he like his dreads all fell off that day or something like that. Yeah. And then there's Narada Muni with his Vima. And it's like we made the announcement before the beginning of the lecture. Please stop fiddling with your musical instruments. We're not singling anyone out. But especially the Vina. Please stop messing with the Vina. <laughs> You can even swami doesn't even have a microphone. And here's another thing: if Narada Muni, <laughs> if they sat, if they sat listening for a long time to the Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada Muni has a curse; he can only stay in any place long enough to milk a cow. So basically, he had to keep leaving. Right. So there's like the rustling. <laughs> he's like, and like he's walking chanting, through. and we all know his like flight is mantra powered. So he's like, Radhikaraman. He's like flying away. They're like, oh, the Radhikaraman thing. Like, <laughs> everyone take a five minute break. <laughs> Bernard Muni Prabhu has to leave. And you know that 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 painting, like like Parikshit Maharaj is like is like as a king, right? But he's like just when his copins, but he's still got this like sweet mustache. Like did they Fully have to waxed. add that? Yeah, like did Fully they have to waxed. add that? Just make sure that he's a king, he right. has his mustache, like Well that's how you know the difference between a Rishi and a king is the Rishi's got like Yeah, right. And and the king has the, the mustache, just the This is like a Barnatyam thing. Like really, like, it is, right? yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. And they also always cock this shoulder. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, tell us the song. Beautiful song. Like a monsoon cloud, the holy name showers nectar in their ears. Mm. I love that. It's not on their ears. In, in the, the ears. ears, a monsoon in your ear. Ah, makes my ear itch just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then. All the people of the universe become mad. And, and, then, and then check this out. Some are crying. So Lord Shiva embracing Narada Muni. What a nice hug. The cobra is like in his face. like Repeatedly makes loud screams of ecstatic joy. Who does? Lord Shiva embracing Narada Muni. And Lord Brahma dancing very enthusiastically. So he's dancing very, sorry, ecstatically. Dancing very ecstatically. Says, all of you kindly chant Hari Bol, Hari Bol. So basically, I think in this, like, Lord Ram is like an older Indian gentleman. Because he's <laughs> ecstatically dancing. But when he's not like, everyone chant He's like, all of you kindly chant Hari Bol, Hari Bol. He's like, his hands are like bobbing. He's like a South Indian guy. He's like rocking it. See, because Lord Rama's heads don't go from side to side because it's not one head, right? It's right. four. So his it's hands four. are like, like a bobble. And he's going. Oh, he's like, all of you kindly chant Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Kindly, kindly. <laughs> I find it funny that when they always they always have a beard for Lord Shiva, but there's a painting that where he doesn't have Lord a beard. Lord Shiva, you mean Lord Brahma? Lord Brahma, sorry, because sorry. Lord Shiva never has a beard. No, he does. I've seen pictures. All the like the old Indian. Ones. Yeah, Iskand, you ever right? see that Iskan? No, no. It's funny, Iskand Lord Shiva, one... like, does he have a razor? How does he get cleanly shaven? I don't know. Maybe the snakes like. <laughs> oh my God, someone's not gonna find that. <laughs> I've been I, I've been offensive I've offended, lately. I'm offending everyone. I just offended South Indian, older South Indian people. Lord uh, South Indian, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva. I offended Nyard all Modi. the devotees who were trying to offend me. Whoa! But um, how did we get to the song? We were just talking about um, uh, Kirtan, Kirtan, Narada Muni. Um, I don't remember. Okay. Anyways. But, uh, yeah, I love that. I love, I love the, uh, I love that ecstatic kirtan that they're having together. That blissful ecstatic. Oh, I think maybe it was this. I, anyway, basically I, I felt, I felt during that time that we should have been better than that. I felt like that we should have been able to see our unified. And actually mm, right, I right, sent yeah. a message to this devotee through through you know a friend of mine really begging like please we're trying our best here we're just low class people yeah yeah please see that we're also trying to spread the kirtan nam kirtan here in the west right and uh and i tried to like make it all better but krishna has his own way you know mm. krishna has his own way so um i i think that hari nam like what we call Harinam in America, which is like out in the streets singing yes. and dancing, is kind of what 
is happening in, in the West because people don't really hang out on the street always anymore. Mm. So we've got to take Kirtan to where the people are. Right. So sometimes that is a yoga studio. Yeah. In fact, um, it's a good time to talk about this because I am the king of segways. Apparently. You are. In 2019, this coming year, we're going to be doing monthly Kirtans in New York. Really? I've been, I've been invited to do a Kirtan residency at a theater... Kirtan Which, residency? Yeah, it's a monthly Sunday kirtan at two p at two or three p.m. on Sunday. One Sunday a month in in Washington Heights. Washington Heights is um, is that is, Queens? It's north of Harlem. Oh, okay. And um, it's the new up and coming neighborhood, Inwood, and all the stuff. It's like the new Brooklyn. Oh. And. Uh, we're we're going to be um, at this place called United Palace, which is a really interesting, old, ancient, beautiful theater from the 20s. Mm. And uh, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Um, but we're going to be doing kirtan there every month. And um, yeah, and uh, so we're, bring, we're trying to bring kirtan to where people are. Definitely, you know? definitely. Appreciate that. It's a great, great service. Um, <clears throat> so... What else? <laughs> you're a tough. You're a tough guest. Let me just say that. Why? I don't know, just so many things to talk about. So let's. Just so many there. things that you can't even. It's hard to put your finger on. Because oh, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. You're asking me what I think about. Here's another thing that I like to think about when I. Here's what I really think about. Okay. I told you what I like to think about. Yes. But that's not what I usually think about. Yeah. That's what I try to think about. Um. What I usually think about is if I'm serving the devotees. Oh, that's nice. What I usually think about is, are the devotees losing their attention? Should I change here so that it brings everyone back into focus? Yeah, that's good. Or I think about, um, am I keeping the rhythm steady so that the devotees can dance? Yes. They're already dancing, so should we keep it now here just as long as possible so that they can dance? Something I always remember you telling me mm. is that if you're do, if you're leading a kirtan and devotees are dancing, you can't stop. Yeah. You told me that once, and that re, that struck me, and I was just like, "That's so true." Now, whenever I sing and devotees are dancing, I'm like, "Oh man, I can't stop." You gotta keep going. Gotta keep going, because you're you're like assisting them you're in assisting. their ecstatic. You become das and das. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So. Now it's my turn to interview you. No, 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 no. A few more things. A few more things. Um, what do you think um, is the way forward with ISKCON in North America? Um, you know, people think you're funny, but your show is incredibly serious. Really? Yeah. Sorry, did I touch your foot? No. I like these serious topics, but, you know... I think it's wise to leave them for later in the show so that people who are really serious listeners can get into them. <laughs> really? We should give a little We're already advance. later in the show. Yeah, we, yeah. We're an hour into the... No, no, no. Exactly. That's what I mean. I think this is good. I think you should have the more serious questions. Later. Don't spring them earlier because then people don't get to know. Like Just banter, banter, a little song and dance. I and see, I see. Yeah, I yeah. think it's smart. Good point. I think it's a good, good... It's a really powerful and important question. I see. And I want to hear it from you being like someone who, uh, you know, I like interviewing devotees who are kind of like out in the, in the world who, who, who are interacting with people. Like I had Brajananda, this the book distributor on the other day, and I was like, is book distribution dead? Like people are saying that books are not, you know, what's going forward, how to preach and things like that. And this, and this devotee, he's like at universities like all year round. Like he mm. meets tons of kids every day. Mm. So I wanted to know from him, like, what, you know, what is it about that? So, like, similarly, like, you meet people all the time. That's what you do. You you go to, you know, yoga studios and other places and you meet music people. Festivals. Music festivals. and things, yeah. So, like, obviously something to do with Kirtan. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I'm, but, I'm, but I want to hear from you. Like, what is it for? So what's the question again? The question is, uh, what's the, how do you see ISKCON going forward in North America specifically? In North America. Yeah, because other places, you know, we, we see it going forward. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to surprise you. Okay. I've got this wacky idea. Tell me. Called the Vaishnav Collective. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. I have a few things that I think about often. Yes. Um, 
We have a problem in our society with finances. Oh, yeah. And I think I have a solution. We tried this. We did a dry run of this, and it was wildly successful. Really? Yeah. It's called Vaishnav Collective. And what you do is you start a local fund, invitation-only fund, amongst friends. And you make a commitment to join the fund. It's invitation only. So it's like you and whoever you want is allowed to join your fund. And you make a commitment to join the fund of giving whatever amount you want. It's up to the people who make the fund to make their own rules. It could be a lot or it could be a little. Like it could be a little to encourage everyone to give. But you have to give it for the entire year. You aggregate your money. And then you vote with the members of your fund where that money gets spent. Well, that's pretty cool. What is revolutionary about it is a few things. First of all, we don't have a tithing system in ESCON. Yeah. So we don't fund our organization properly because it's based on inspiration. Mm. So unfortunately, very charismatic people get funded and people who don't hit the pavement and fundraise like that don't get funded. Mm. That's not right. New bathrooms should be funded just as well as, you know you know, a festival on planet Mars or whatever. Right. So the first thing this does is it gets people to tithe. The second thing it does is when they give the money, they no longer see it as their money. They see it as money for donation. So then it's just a question of what to give it to. It's no longer a question of I want my money back. It's mm. a question of what, and who's responsible for what to give it to themselves choosing right. as a community, as a right. group. It's a good idea. Then what happens is they feel directly responsible for how the money is spent because they're the ones who are giving the money to the thing. Mm. So, for example, say DC Temple is doing a fun fundraising for a new temple. If a fund or multiple funds existed in DC, people could choose, we're going to build the shoe room. We're going to build the kitchen. We're going to build, and they could give to just one area of the temple that they know what the budget is and exactly, and then they could fund that. Mm. Um, and what happens is people, you know, come up with different ideas who are members of the fund. So-and-so got sick. Can we give to his hospital bills? So-and-so's, you know, um, wants to donate for their Guru Maharaj's new book that they're making. So-and-so want, And you just vote. Interesting. It's really empowering. And you won't believe how quickly the money aggregates. And you feel better for giving... Like you're giving five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, it feels better than just giving the five hundred that you could have given because you yourself could only afford to give five hundred. Mm. You're part of giving five thousand because you're part of the fund. Right. Oh, that's interesting. The other thing is it leverages the grassroots to start steering the direction of where the money in the movement goes because we want certain things. Like one of the one of the jokes that I make is that like. There's like the last foam plate manufacturer in the whole world in China and they're doing their books and they're just praying that they don't lose their last account, right. which is the International Society for Christian Consciousness, who's the only one still using foam plates right. at the Sunday face. Yeah. You know? And in D.C., when we did this, we told the temple. So you piloted it in D.C.? Yeah. And we told it, it was me, Manish, Vinay, uh, Nisha... Uh, Sham, Rasamrita, um, did I say Manish? Yeah. Um, my wife, a few other friends. And kids can come because if you want a kid, the kid also gets voting rights by giving $1 a month. They give $1 or $5 or whatever. <laughs> they do it for a year. <laughs> and if you want a more serious fund, you can separate it. And it can be like, this fund is only for members $500 per month and above or whatever. Right, right. It's really empowering. Anyway, I think it's important to consider the finances because th this kind of thing would allow money to grow and yet it to be spent properly. Mm. We told the DC Temple we wanted them to, um, to use uh, um, uh, compostable plates and that we'd pay for the year's worth of compostable plates. Mm. And they switched. Because we paid for it, they switched. And then after that, they were like, we're already ordering the thing. Let's just keep ordering the thing. <laughs> That's good. Right. So that's one thing I think needs to Iskand needs to get to get its finances in order. We need better systems for taking care of each other and devotees in North America. It's it's um the 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 finance wise it's like every temple is kind of autonomous. Right? 
Uh, I don't know the exact legal structure, but... Like, think, they don't affect the larger... No, I think temples are autonomous. I think that's right. part of, like, you know, what gets challenging sometimes, Yeah. you know, legally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, I think temples are autonomous. I, I think, though, that a lot of people find, like, I think there's tension between the temple presidents, the local temple authorities, and, like, the GBC and the gurus, because and the grihastas, because... There's no clear sense of where the money's supposed to go, so everyone's scrambling to try and like yeah. get their projects funded. Yeah. So what I like about this Vaishnav Collective is, first of all, it's scalable. Second of all, it gets the money donated already. Then it's just a question of where to spend the money. Mm. And who gets to choose to spend the money are the people who it's money it is in cooperation with people who have viable projects. So what if they can't vote on it? Then you split and make another fund. It's completely voluntary. You only invite the people to the fund that like the same kinds of things. Let's make a fund that only funds DD dresses. We always want new DD dresses, you know? Mm -hmm. Turbans only fund. <laughs> you know, we only give to the turbans for the DDs. Right. Flowers fund. You know? It's really scalable. I, 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 think, I really think it could solve some, some, some issues. Hmm. And I think more importantly, what it does is it gets us off our butts financially and starts get, getting devotees to really start taking responsibility yeah. and gets us involved. Some things that I always hear from people who are not part of ISKCON is like, ISKCON's all about money. Oh, did I say the wrong thing? No. Should I have talked about like, um, you know, like more Tulsi growing or like... No, no, no. That, I'm not saying about what you said. I'm just saying that um, that grow in the green. <laughs> <laughs> you know that we don't really focus like it's it's all about like growing. Um, you know the temple, making big uh, palatial temples, and doing all these things. But like the work, the real inner work. I mean, you can't say that about Iskon as a whole. As a whole, of course you can't. That's just immature. But uh, I don't know. I just hear that a lot. That who who do you hear that from? Like um, like friends, uh, congregation members. Yeah, I do hear that from congregation members. Yeah. So they might feel that okay, they're getting hit up for money, and like this is this would solve that. There's no more hitting people up for money. Right. That's part of what's going on. Part of what people have to understand is, as far as I can see, we're moving into a new phase mm. as a society. Um, Indian bodied devotees who yeah. I've grown up with have a culture of charity. Yes. And their families have a culture of charity. Like Christian people have a culture of tithing. It's like a different culture and it does the same thing. Mm -hmm. But in Indian culture, people don't like to tithe. They like to give mm -hmm. to things that inspire them. So we are in this interesting place. And this is the next thing that I would love to chat about sometime with you is um, this thing about how to find a way to harmonize the different segments of our society racially economically culturally mm -hmm. geographically so that we're working together not working apart from each other you know mm. against each other but uh i think we need our own culture of charity that also works for the west the point is it can't only work for the way it works in india yeah yeah no it's it has true to work for the west i think uh I think we're in, in between things right now. We need, we need our own little system. What I like about this also is it keeps the money outside of the movement, the institution, until it's used. Do mm. you know what I'm saying? Like The money's not given to ISKCON, right. but it's given to the fund for ISKCON. Right, right. It gives the, you know, one of the things Radhana Swami is pretty exemplary at is that he's always allowed the grihastas and the business people to maintain the control over the finances of every project that he's ever been involved in. Interesting. It makes life more difficult for him, but in the long run, it makes it better for everyone. Right. In my experience. Uh, going back to what you were saying about, you know, unifying, you know, things. Um, homogenizing is gone right someone told me so i was talking to someone and they were saying how an idea is that we have 
this has worked in other places that separate separate temples for different uh, women in Australia. I think all women should move to Australia. Right, right. And all brown people who <laughs> speak Spanish should move to Spanish Harlem. <laughs> I don't buy it. I think it's. I think it's not. It's not realistic. Really? Well, let me let me t- tell you more about it. So so the, so the program. I mean the idea that I don't agree with. Tell me more. Yeah. Tell. Uh, yeah. So you, in the morning uh, on the at the temple, you have the Indian program. Because the Indian people like getting up early. <laughs> and then and then all the and Indian if people. Someone's got to hustle. There's spicy. Be there's, them. there's 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 class in in Indian. <laughs> okay. Because India has one language. We all know that. It's class in Indian. There's food that's like Indian. Like Native American. <laughs> Did you see that comic I made? Yeah. Did you see it? I think so. They're like, they're like there's a Native American <laughs> couple that comes to the temple, and the devotee's like, oh, this your low-hanging fruit program is not right now. We'll have spicy prashadam for you later. Like, And they're like, they're all like, what? What are you talking about? We're na-. And then someone's like, not those kind of Indians, like the other kind of Indians. There was another comic that Muddy just put out in iscon.com yeah. about Indians being. I don't know if you saw that one. I didn't see another, it. No. It play on Indians. Yeah. Uh, so so the so that's when the Indian program is, and then then because we want to attract Westerners, the Western people, we have a program for them in the evening where they can all come and have bland bland prasad. <laughs> <laughs> like, and wear and, their high heeled Eng- shoes. And English and English classes and you know, we can take the pews out and put and so they can sit and I I, I think it's it, I think it's funny. Okay, well let me let me reflect back to you. This is this yeah. is this is I mean this is the question. These are this is great, important stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um I went to one of those. Let's see if someone has listened this far to into our into the podcast. Okay. If any <laughs> One hour into the podcast, yeah. Um, I went to a, one of those mega churches in Australia, mm-hmm. and uh, they had a white service. Really? Yeah, but it wasn't called a white service. But okay. It was a traditional kind of white service. Yeah. You know, kind of guitar songs and like singing and you know preaching and whatever, followed by tea and crumpets in yeah. the yeah. in the uh, in the lobby. Which was the beginning of the Cantonese service. And the Cantonese service started with a big giant meal where all the Cantonese people sat at this huge massive spread of Chinese food. And then they would go in for the Cantonese service. So they had the same service at the same time. It's just, just basically set apart for people who wanted different services. Mm. It's obviously working for them. They have a huge Cantonese, uh, you know, it's like a mega church. Right. Um, you know, the question that comes up for me on this is, are we discouraging or in- encouraging bodily consciousness? And one of the things a lot of us have experienced and, and one of the things we cherish about being devotees is that you find yourself dancing in kirtan with someone who you have nothing in common with. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a multimillionaire. Like his life and my life don't really jive. Right. But we're embracing and laughing and dancing and, you know. Mm. Um. Or a homeless guy, or a whatever, you know. Hmm. Um, I think maybe if we focused, rather than on race or the externals, we focused on the content variation. So this particular thing is going to be primarily in English. This feast is going to be, you know, American food. This feast is going to be traditional Indian food. This program is going to be, um, and I think the Bhakti Center is doing this. Hmm. This program is going to be focused on Gita study for those who are more comfortable with Gita. This program is going to be focused for people who are new to the Gita. Right. I think content-based focus is maybe more our speed. That's, than, that's a good point. Than race or economic-based. Right. But it is an interesting thing. You know, a, a, a real challenge that I have is. Um, is this business about cultural appropriation and kind of the the d de- I don't even know how to explain this without offending the only listener still on the program. <laughs> um, 
Who's ha- who's falling asleep right now? <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> I'm falling I'm gonna sleep. Uh, no, just say it. Just say it. I don't. I don't have any censoring on I, this show. I feel like a, I feel like a lot of second generation Indian kids in America. Yeah. Not devotees. Right. Are trying to de-spiritualize all Indian things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I really bothers me. Really. Yeah. Because for so many reasons, but one of the reasons why it really bothers me is um, that they're insisting that they're the owners of it. Right. You know, like I'm culturally appropriating by telling stories from the Ramayana, even though I grew up with stories from Ramayana and I grew up with stories from Mahabharata and whatever. Privately, jokingly, they'll be like, oh my God, you're more Indian than me. Yeah. But then when I say, no, Diwali is a spiritual festival, then they get upset. Like, who are you to say what it is? We decide that it's not. Right. We decide Diwali is basically the 4th of July picnic. Yeah, yeah. It really bothers me. And I think it's a big challenge. I think um, we haven't yet seen the final, like, throws of the battle. But I think there's going to be a big battle for the soul of Hinduism in America, mm. and therefore internationally. Yeah. And I think uh, we're gonna. It's gonna be. We're gonna be caught in the crosshairs. It's gonna be serious business at some point. That's I think, really interesting. I think a lot of the funding that ISKCON has depended on for sustenance, and and not just funding, but like like social energy, mm. has come from the Indian community. But they're mostly first generation. Yes. Yes. And when their children who do not want to hang out with a bunch of white people and be told. Anything about Hinduism from anyone who's not brown? Yeah. Um, stop coming to Iskon temples. We're gonna really have a like a like a soul search to figure so out. So true. We're doing. So true. That's really true. I I always think about that. I always think about that. Like we when we when we preach or we we do outreach in temples, like to you know the Indian community we're mostly doing it for like the first generation who's come over it's not really like where do you I think it's a mistake well yeah I think it was a blessing and it's been a blessing to the Indian community and it's been a blessing to ISKCON definitely but I think it's gone too far I'm not someone who who like I don't think of you as Indian Mm. like Somewhere on the list of things, when I go through the things that I would think of you, I'd be like, boom, 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 boom. Somewhere on that list is that you're an Indian, in, in an Indian body. Yeah. But it's pretty low on the list. Oh, yeah. I even my, uh, I kind of use it to my advantage sometimes. because you're Like, I'm, I'm Indian. Yeah. And, but then I'm like, no, no, I'm, I was, I'm American. I'm I grew American. up here. Yeah. What are you talking about? Do yeah. I sound Indian to you? Yeah. So, so, so I, I feel like. The Indian community blessed ISKCON and saved uh, ISKCON so much. Oh, yeah, in the 80s, 90s. Yeah, by bringing energy when they were really struggling. Because after Prabhupada, after fall of so many leaders who like couldn't handle the heat, yeah. they kind of like bro fell apart. The Indian community and their sweet, kind, patient sustenance and nourishment. Mm. You know, ISKCON is basically an adopted kid of an Indian family. That's so funny that you say that. That's uh, that's so true. Because like taller anything. Well, like, like the, if you're not family, but you are family, yeah. that's like the situation. Like Indian devotees are so encouraging to me. Yeah. Anything I do makes them happy. They're just happy that I'm chanting. They're happy that I'm around. They, yeah. you know. And and I find that in general, like Indian hospitality, like when I travel in India is so from the heart and so loving and so kind. Such a beautiful culture of kindness and hospitality and graciousness mm. and all mm. that stuff. You know, even with very impoverished people. Mm. I think it's something India can be really proud of is their hospitality, you know? Definitely. I mean, even today, with it's still, it still carries on. The culture, the culture is there, even if it's, like, changing. It's still there. Um because I travel a lot in India. I travel every year. I get to like refresh my my feeling and my experience of India every year. Mm. But um but I feel like I feel like we made a mistake. Because f- 
for example, taking the analogy further, which is just going to confuse everything, but it's okay. Taking the analogy further, say, um, say I'm bringing a new product to a market somewhere and I'm alone in this new country and I'm ha finding a hard time to like make friends and I find a family who takes me in and encourages me and helps me like be happy and be feel like I have a family in that country or whatever. Mm. They still may not understand the product themselves just because they're kind doesn't mean that they are the ones who can tell me how to sell my product in that country. Mm. So I guess what I'm saying that is the Indian people who came to America to find wealth and prosperity and peace and you know opportunity don't necessarily know what Prabhupada was trying to bring. Oh, to totally. I agree. So our primary responsibility is to Prabhupada for his vision. Mm. And I think we went a little too far in trying to accommodate our foster family. Mm. Like our foster family took us in. Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. owe them mm -hmm. at least two decades of our life. Yes. And that's a real thing. It's not something to be, you know, sloughed off. And yet we still have a responsibility to Prabhupada, mm. our, you know, father who gave us this product that we need to distribute. Yeah. So finding that balance, it's a thing, you know. Can you give an example of where you feel like it's gone too far in that direction? Like a practical example. I mean, most temples that you go to in the world, people think Krishna consciousness is an Indian thing. Right. But Srila Prabhupada never presented Krishna consciousness as an Indian thing. Right. It wasn't not an Indian thing, but it wasn't an Indian thing. That's my point. Mm. Everyone is welcome to come as they are. But people who try and amalgamate Krishna consciousness with, with cultural Hinduism or race, you know, identity, they're missing the boat. It's not that at all. Mm. You're not any more qualified to be a devotee of Krishna if you're in an in Indian body than you are in any other body. Right. Good point. Vedic culture. I mean, that's the other thing that people don't understand. See, I think... People struggle for identity in America because American culture is so insidious. I think is the right word. Ubiquitous and insidious. It just like bleeds into everything. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Like there's a general stereotype that men are dogs and they like sex and they like women mm. and they like to to kind of like talk about sex with the other men mm -hmm. and like so what's happening with president trump it's like it's okay that the president's like this because everyone's like this right yeah right that's like a generally accepted quality for men but where does that come from i would argue that in a lot of ways that's coming from american media like who says that men have to be like that mm. who says that all men enjoy taking advantage of women Privately, I don't know that that's a universal truth. Mm. I, I think you can say it's a universal truth, spiritual truth, that everyone takes advantage of other people. That's what, that's like what we're working on. Yeah. But the idea that that... So I was just thinking about this the other day, that if I'm... Say I'm a Vietnamese immigrant and I come into this country and I want to be accepted by my white American friends, all I have to do is act like the way they act on television and they'll accept me. <laughs> I have to drink... I have to like womanize a little bit. I have to like work hard. I have to, you know, um, whatever, you know, you know, you know, like you're, you have to choose what group you're part of. And like, there's the, the us and them, whatever it is. Like who says these are the rules for existence. Mm. But if you accept them, you are welcomed into American society mm. and it's dangerous. And I see that happening with the second generation Indian kids, you know, People who are anglicizing their names so that they're easier to pronounce, mm -hmm. and 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 um, secularizing all Indian holidays, and um, basically, it's the same thing the Jews did when they came to America right. after you know during and after World War II. 
They tried to homogenize. And the people, the children, see, this is the funny thing that's going to happen in my prediction. The children of the second generation secular Indian people yeah. are going to become spiritualized again, just like the children of the Jews did, because their parents are like, why do we go to the synagogue? I don't know. That's what we do. Well, why do we believe this? It's because well, you don't ask those questions. This is what we do. Same thing that happened with the Catholic. A lot of, lot of Catholics and a lot of Jews in Iskand. Mm. And, 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 and a lot of Indians. And I think the reason why is these people, they're intelligent, they're inquisitive, and their parents just wanted to homogenize with right. the culture. Oh, well, that's a good point. And so the children are like, wait, I want a substantive life. I want a life full of meaning. I want to know why I'm doing it. And when Prabhupada just said, well, this is why you should do this. Yeah. They came in droves. In our town here, in the library, they had a Diwali like thing mm -hmm. no no i saw pictures of it online at our you know the montville um website there was no like anything related to god in in the whole thing you know you know one of the things that 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 i really frustrates me about indian modern indian history is that by embracing only the secular side of gandhi's mission and basically erasing any of the spiritual side of Gandhi's mission mm. and then embracing him in connection with Martin Luther King Jr. And then not embracing any of Martin Luther King Jr.'s spiritual side, but only embracing his secular side. Mm -hmm. We're basically taking the icing only. Mm -hmm. We're not getting any of the cake. Right. And how long can you eat icing before you need to vomit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what happens in, in modern India, as opposed to Pakistan or Bangladesh, they embrace their religious identity. They're like, we're a Muslim country, right? But they split into the British, split India, and the Nehru follows this idea of like, um, of like modernization and factorization and all this stuff. And now India's like, they don't, they're not Hindu, they're not not Hindu. Like, people are just like, we can't, we're not allowed to have a Hindu holiday because, you know, it's, 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 people aren't included and like, so like we're just gonna like water ourselves down until we just wash the whole thing away and there's nothing left, you know. Celebrating your heritage, celebrating the spiritual essence of something doesn't exclude someone else from doing the same thing. Mm. Great point. You know, we all have a right to celebrate our spiritual identities beyond, you know. We we have a responsibility to I think. Anyway. I, long story short, I mean, we're getting all scattered all over the place, but I, I feel like, um, I feel like we, ISKCON, need to care for everyone who walks in the door the way they want to be cared for. First generation Indian, second generation, third generation, because we're, we've got third and sometimes fourth generation already. Yeah. Um, new, you know, people who are Christian. You know, old devotees who are Christian, who still hold some softness and sweetness in their heart for Jesus and for yeah, like that's root Maharaj. There's people. The people are people, mm. and we have to care for each other. So I think the question that you asked is really the right question: is like, how can we go forward? How do we do this in a way that's loving? Yeah, because every option that I've heard is not that. It's a real problem. You know um, what was going on with the Radha Govinda Temple recently? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's kind of, uh, there's like, seems to be like light at the end of the tunnel. Everyone's kind of like, there's a way, like at this point, everyone's just going to kind of try and move forward with what's happening now. But there was a point where it was super stuck. Yeah. And it yeah. was like, it was in, in court and everyone's like, and I just remember thinking at one point, this isn't okay. I'm not even talking about who's to blame. I'm not even talking about it. I'm not talking about whose fault it is. Yes. That's yes. not what I'm talking about. Yeah. The fact that our friends and a temple and a group of devotees are in this morass of disagreement is not okay. Yeah, it's not. Especially because I'm friends with everyone yeah. on both sides of the thing. And I almost like, I felt like just getting on the phone and just insisting that a bunch of our young, us, younger generation, figure out a solution. Because it wasn't okay for any of us what was going on. So there's got to be a way forward. So we have to take responsibility. So at this point, we're still going to have to do that now. You know? But, yeah. But you're, you're right. We have to do it with love. It's really important. Like if we looked at the bigger picture, it was on both sides, it was Krishna's money being used. 
And it was people's sincere desire to serve Krishna and Prabhupada on both sides of the thing. Right, right. But the one thing that has to happen that 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 situation wasn't allowing, like I said, I'm not even talking about blame at all. I'm just talking about the reality of being on the ground. Devotees coming together in a loving way and working out their differences in a loving way. That has to happen. We have to find a way to be able to do that. Mm. That's not what happened with me with the criticism I was receiving around what I was doing. Yeah. Kirtan. No, no, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. But it, but it doesn't ever solve anything for it to happen in any other way. The main takeaway, I would say, is that everything has to be done with kindness and love and empathy. and. It's so important. It's so important. Like, we kind of gloss over it, but it's like, why did Prabhupada say, you know, you'll show your love for me by how you cooperate with each other like we just see you know Kali Yuga is just full of you know disagreement and quarrel and stuff this kind of has to be different has to be different agreed I mean uh, you know one of the challenges in having such a broad organization that invites everyone in is you've got diversity Radhanath Swami said a very interesting thing um, people are going to think I'm like a mega f- Radhanath Swami mega fan well because I am but uh but i was just with him this week so yes. you know a lot of my time with him is ringing in my ears and yeah um i could also quote my female guru my mom <laughs> did i just say female that? guru did I just what say are you that talking about <laughs> just say that on the microphone <laughs> my mom probably said the first guru my mom's my first guru yeah and she's a female i'm just saying it happened Hey, Maleta Takarani. I'm just saying. Okay. Jonathan Davy. Okay. Takarani. Shh. Shh. Sorry. Mother Yamuna. <laughs> um, he, he said something to you. One of the things that Radhana Swami said to me. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about kindness. We're talking about uh, doing things with love. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Can't remember now. Lost my train of thought. Sorry. I bantered. I bantered away my life. <laughs> I think we're coming up to the end here. So, um, did you yeah, want to I ask me? Loving s- kindness. I think yeah. loving kindness is super important. And I think, uh, I think that we should remember that um, we aren't in control of what happens, but we can influence how things happen and our consciousness of how things happen. Mm. That we actually have some control over. So I think it's really important. I, I said to Pro, how Prabhupada said, you show your love for me by how you cooperate, how you cooperate with, each other. with each other. Does that yeah. kind of, do you remember what, because you were going to say it right after that. Yeah. Um, what you were going to say after you know what marriage told you no i just think i think it's really really important you know i agree with you um i had a i had a nice realization this week um radana swami has never criticized me i i know i'm deserving of criticism Mm -hmm. but he's never criticized me he's only ever encouraged me right and you know as a father i have three kids I'm constantly looking how to make my kids better. And so I'm criticizing, like, don't do this. It's not how you do this. You know, you're going to burn yourself. Like, don't think like this. You know, no, you should speak nicely when you're like, you know, critical, 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 critical. Yeah, yeah. Byron just never criticized me. And yet, when I'm in his company, all I want to do is be the best possible person. Mm. I'm striving whenever I think of him or near him. Yes. So I had the realization during this week, this time with him, that Probably, if I see faults in others, it's probably because I'm embarrassed that I have that fault myself. Mm -hmm. And that if I can be a little tolerant and and try and think of a loving way to encourage them rather than discourage them, they'll be more likely to do the things that they're encouraged to do. And that maybe whenever I see a fault, I should see where that fault is in myself. Mm. And I think Marge has probably said that 40 billion times. And this is the only time after 20 years of being an aspiring disciple that I've heard it. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think Father does that. It did it to me, I feel. 
like you Probably kind of have. yeah you'd yeah. feel like more compassionate and accepting and like letting things go and like i remember before it was like so like critical really mm-hmm. critical so much love in the little little dudes little I, know, people. I know and they're just like constantly doing things wrong but it's just like it's endearing it's endearing and it's like i don't know something cool about it so so when are you gonna when are you gonna start start uh uh writing a movie i'm russ me write a movie yeah why not comedy writing anything is like i'm not a writer at what all what do you mean i'm not what do you mean you're you make up all sorts of funny great stuff and comics and everything i'm like more like um visual um i would have to sit with someone and i'll be like um and then he does this okay okay that's good that's that, that's right what about what about tell me about your process for making up your comics uh, I I just like I just like when does I'm doing something. Does the image come first or does the joke come first? No, the joke comes first. The joke comes first, and I'm like, is it the punchline first or the setup first? The punchline, definitely the punchline. The punchline. Goes yeah, first? Yeah, 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 really straight up, you get the punchline first. Yes, yes. Give me an example. Um, so, which one? The disembodied voice. Oh, the one I did. The one I sent to you of. Is that a, like an old auntie? From the past, who's speaking? The Akashvani. Akashvani. It's an it's it's an English lady who doesn't even sound English. Does Akashvani? <laughs> does Akashvani speak like Amitabh Bachchan? <laughs> <laughs> or does Akashvani have like a long like, 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 like ninety like ah Kamsa you fool? <laughs> She's ah, doing Kamsa. Ah, the eighth child's gonna kill you. <laughs> it's like annoying her kind. Like Akashvani. <laughs> Stop talking. What if Akashvani's like Australian and we can understand? Ah, come to get away from my accent. And they're like, and they're like, what did he say? Did, what did he say? Listen very carefully. <laughs> Wait, I missed the Akashvani. Say it again. Um, yeah, the punchline comes first, like for this or one. That- like Barry White. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to interview me or you're just going to continue to banter? <laughs> Tell me. Cartels. Yeah, so so um so I always thought the word cartel sounded like cartel. Right. So then I was like Especially with a Jersey accent. Yeah, so I was like Cartel cartel. Yeah, so I made the comic about, you know, Bhakti Bob brings like all these like rough-looking people behind him and the temple presence at the door. He's like Bob, I meant, I said the temple needs a new pair of cartels, not cartels. And then all the guy, all the guys with guns and like face masks, are like, what? Okay, fine. And they like go back. <laughs> Basically like that. But I think of them. I think of them at random times. Yeah. Uh, but you know, a lot of it gets ruined. Like my creativity gets ruined. Like for wanting likes and comments on Facebook. What, you're trying to get more likes? Yeah, I'm just like, I put it up and I'm just like sitting there, like watching, like. Dude, I have no desire to accumulate wealth. I have no desire. Beautiful women's. I have no desire. Accumulate likes. Uh, followers. Any number of followers. <laughs> this is. Look, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, He's the man. Forecast. Kali Yuga. Avatar of Kali Yuga. I mean, come followers. On. Dude, no, any number of followers. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. You should do it. You should. I know that's why I stopped putting them up, and I'm off Facebook, and I, I just do them in my book now. Uh, we're gonna compile a book. Actually. Oh, good, good. That's we're gonna put it on. We, do you, you remember become, the karma? Free? You become a literary man. <laughs> I've moved away from pop culture. I've moved to the ivory tower. Yes, yes. I publishing. guess so. publishing. Cool. Yeah. That's great. The printing press is the Brihat Murdanga. <laughs> Facebook is the Brihat Murdanga. Yeah. But anyway. I love it. Well, you're so talented. We love your work so much. Thank you. It's something I, I you know, I'm excited about. I like doing comics. I like doing memes. I love doing, the, you know, just things that people make people laugh, lighthearted. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like it changes people's conception or perception of me. Mm. Like that I'm... Like that, I'm just always joking, and mm. I like I I caught caught some flack for you know some of the memes that I did. Like I made one about Ritvix, and mad people like oh, yeah. message me like <laughs> really seriously, like you know they're people too, and and you know they're devotees too, and you should you should be more respectful. And I was like, it's a roast. A, should do one of a mannequin, 
in the window, and Devotee's like, is that a Ritvik? And the other one's like, no, Ritviks are people too. <laughs> uh, Christians are all Ritviks. Every Christian is a Ritvik. Yeah. Yeah. So are most of the except South, they don't make South Indian Sri Vaishnava. Except they don't ma- make magazines based upon the other Christians and criticizing them. Sometimes they probably do. Back to Jesus. Maybe, yeah. Well, they do. There's a lot of churches like the real church, real church of hot on fire Bible love church. But that's like like people not don't... your church church. Right, right. Yeah. That sounds south, though, right? Everyone, everyone, we always like to. Everyone criticizes everyone all the time. That's the that's the name of the game in Kali Yuga. Yeah, criticize each other. That's how you get more likes. Criticize other people. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Well, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. And um, and your kid's super cute. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And both of your Tulsis are very beautiful. <laughs> thank you. One I don't have control over. One I do. And they both sing. One you think you have control over, and the other one you know you don't have control over. Exactly. You have to figure out which is which. Exactly. <laughs> one talks back to me. One just listens. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah. What were you saying about criticizing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, art and culture is the way forward, and I think you're doing a great job. And uh, I want to invite everybody to my 2019 Kirtans. Yes. At yes, the yes. United Palace. Let's end on that, yeah. And um, please come. We're going to be there one Sunday a month. And I'm actually trying to do it as a Kirtan-based church service. That is so cool. Like the church of... like The church you, of Kirtan. The church of Kirtan. Bakti Uno Thakur, didn't he coin that? Yeah. Yeah. The church of Kirtan. I love it. Gora, thank you. My great pleasure. We'll have you on again. Uh, I could talk to you for ages. This is probably the longest podcast we've ever done. <laughs> and it was brilliant. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. It's it really my pleasure. If, if anyone wants everybody. to get in touch with you, um, you're on Instagram. What's your um, uh, My Instagram Gauravani. is at Goravani. Yeah, just at Goravani. And um, I'm starting a couple of new little things. Yeah, tell us about it. Um, I'm starting a, a chat club uh, Instagram chant club yeah to encourage each other about chanting our japa that's so brilliant i love that and it's also kind of like i'm trying to send out to a few friends like a morning like just like hey you know get up get up and chant your japa. did you ever hear that that pro thing did i send that to you oh my god you have to listen to this this is so <laughs> brilliant hold on everyone has to listen to this this is so good um Prabhu, wake up Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, please wake Prabhu, up please wake up this is important listen to this listen to this so someone sent me this on Instagram, uh, sorry, on WhatsApp and said, best alarm tone ever. Don't sleep. Get up. Rescue, get up. This is the opportunity. Just that. Isn't that awesome? You know, Prabhupada's the best. Prabhupada's the best. Prabhupada's the best. So amazing. Prabhupada is so legit. Prabhupada is too legit. It's just, uh, you know, I can hear that story over and over again, and I have the same reaction of, like, how he was, like, only four people were there to see him off, and, and one of them... Three of them, three of them were Cindy, Cindy's <laughs> Yeah, right. Company. And he got on, and then his son was like, I cried, but because I was so proud of my dad, like... And then Prabhupada gave him 40 rupees because he said, I don't think I'm going to need very much money in America since they don't use rupees anyway. Yeah. And it happened to be the exact amount of money that his son needed for the Ayurvedic medicine for Prabhupada's heart attacks that he got from the shop and sent. I was thinking during that time, like, if someone, if a devotee was a really good swimmer, they could do, like, a fundraiser to do the same route that Prabhupada did, swim from India to America. Like through the um, Suez Canal and all that stuff, Mike. Wouldn't that be cool? Totally doable, I think. Yeah, because you know when they when they do long distance swimming, they do it in a cage with a ship. Oh, really? Yeah, they swim in the cage. But I don't think any human has ever swum that far before. Uh, it would basically be proof of the power of Krishna consciousness. Yes. You know, 
And if, if the devotees started complaining, they're like, I think I'm dying. <laughs> you might be dying of a heart attack. We'd be like, <laughs> just think of Krishna. All the demigods and all the avatars are rowing a boat, a boat carrying you. S- keep swimming. Keep swimming. You're not almost there, but you will be there some point in the next In the next weeks. six months. Yes, you will be there. Keep swimming. On that note, hi, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you guys. Hope you liked the show.